Hi, and welcome to Gate Crashers. Today is a special episode. Uh, I recently got to attend the Philadelphia Film Festival. So it was put on by the Philadelphia Film Society. Um, it's been going for a number of years now, and every year it keeps getting bigger. Uh, it was I got to go to the PFS, PFS Borsch in Philadelphia, which is a really cool theater because they actually show independent films. Um, and they do a lot of different events. Like I know this Tuesday, if, if, I mean, today's Monday. So um, this Tuesday, they actually have Paddington Bear being shown. So it's a very cool theater. Um, I'm very lucky to be in an area where I get to go to things like this. Um, so I'm thankful for Philadelphia and thankful for the Philadelphia Film Society for allowing me to attend as press. But I did get to see Glass Onion, A Knives Out Story, which is the sequel to Knives Out. It was incredible. Well, first off, Brian Johnson was there, and you're listening to this because I'm going to be talking to Ryan Johnson in just a minute. But the film was also because he came out beforehand, and this is when um, the Philadelphia Phillies were still in the running for the World Series. So he was like, all right, I'll be back after the movie, but I, I'll, I'll make sure to bring you the Philly score, which is very funny because if you know Philadelphia, we're very passionate about our sports teams. But the film itself um, was an incredible sequel. It's an ensemble cast, and everyone is so good together. Um, I love Dave Bautista, and Dave Bautista is a big part of this movie. Um, he's so funny. Ed Norton, I mean, fantastic actor. So it was really cool to see him get to do his thing in this film. But overall, like, uh, Ryan killed it again. It was a great film. I really loved it. Uh, but I... But <laughs> Detective Blank, uh, Detective Blanc, played by Daniel Craig, is such a highlight of the film, and it's such a good balance of him being the star with giving everyone else space to show their characters. He's more of our, like, POV character, so, like, we love him, but we want to see all these other eccentric people do their thing. Uh, Ryan killed it. I'm so excited for everyone to see it. It is in theaters for a week right now. Netflix is putting it into theaters. So if you do get the chance to go and see it in theaters, please do so. Um, it is a great experience to see on the big screen. Um, but it will be on Netflix in December. So you can watch it from home for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I got to talk to Ryan Johnson. He was so nice. Uh, we had a great conversation with some really good questions. Uh, about the film, Daniel Craig's role in the creation and like kind of development of the character as they go along, and about mysteries and investigations as a whole. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Now, here's my interview with Ryan Johnson. So, I always like to start off with a hard-hitting question. What's your favorite sandwich? Sandwich? I mean, the first thing that sprung into my head was a BLT, so I guess I have to be honest and say a BLT. It's a good one. Yeah. So, with this being the second outing of Detective Blanc, how do you approach letting him grow as a character without overshadowing the larger-than-life personalities he's investigating? Well, I think that, for me, I, I, and Daniel and I have kind of talked about this, weirdly, in a way, I feel like going too deep into the character of the detective is a mistake. I feel like remembering the detective detective is not actually, he's at the center of it, but he's not like the protagonist of it. Like there's always one of the suspects that is the role of the protagonist. So keeping the detective kind of an enigma, I think, is actually really important in these movies. Um, at the same time, it's fun to drop little little glimpses of what his life is like, and we do that in this movie, too. What is the process of working with Daniel like on the character itself? How do you approach that? I hand him the script. I mean, <laughs> and then he <laughs> makes it his own, and he, not by changing the script, but by embodying it and uh, I mean he did so much work developing that accent and then with this movie he had to completely relearn the accent because he didn't want to just do an imitation of the first film so he kind of started from scratch and like built it up again so um, but he's I mean the reason we're here with the second one and the reason we're going to keep going is just because he and I have a blast doing these he's he's so cool to work with he's one of the best actors on the planet a great movie star and a cool guy so you know fuck him you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to hear. Yeah. So you're clearly a man who loves a good mystery. With this, it seems like you're telling a more of a semi-locked-in room-style format of mystery. Mm -hmm. What made you want to approach it that way rather than a wide-open world investigation? I mean, a little bit. It, it, with a good mystery, 
you're always looking ways to contain the suspects. That's one. So it couldn't. It's not like it takes place at a mall and anyone there could have done it. It needs to be contained. This in particular, um, it doesn't have a lot in common with and then there were none. But the one thing it does have in common is the way I did that was put them on a remote island where they're all alone. So just because of that, it, it is kind of a little more insular. But um, to me, that's fun because it means that within that, we can use that kind of simplicity of that insular thing to do something a little more complicated with the structure of the movie. So, yeah. Thank you. Not even a spoiler, I guess, but it sounds like one. <laughs>